Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Pain Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today we're gonna to paint this celebrated elephant and I'm gonna sip on a little bit of Merlot. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for the materials today, I'm gonna to be using a Stretch and Prime 16 by 20 canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. The colors are titanium white, burnt umber, which I'll call brown, Mars black, fire red, fluorescent orange, chrome yellow, green oxide, and cobalt blue. And of course you could switch up those colors, but that's what I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna be using three brushes today. I have a half inch wide bristle brush, a number 10 round brush, and a number four round brush. And I'll refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And if you're painting with me, you're gonna need a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I'm gonna be giving you a couple of additional resources for you as you go through the painting process. Um, the first of them is a link where you could purchase the same paint kit that I'm using. So it's the same colors, the same big canvas, same brushes. So that's there, it's convenient and it's affordable. Um, and what else is down there is a free downloadable image of the final painting that I do. So you could just go there and print that and use it as a visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions that you could use as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the first step is we are painting the sky, which is gonna be the background for most of the canvas. I'm gonna be using my big brush and the colors that I'm gonna be using are brown, blue, green, and white. And how I'm gonna be doing this is I'm gonna be applying it in a circular fashion. I'm gonna start with it being a little bit darker down at the bottom. I'm gonna try and get the center a little bit lighter um, just so it almost looks like the elephants kind of walking out of the mist or something like that. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna first make a couple of markers so I don't go past a certain point. So I'm gonna put all four colors on my brush at the same time. So I'm picking up blue, green, brown, and white all on my brush at the same time, a little bit of each. And I wanna make a mark about a quarter way up on my left hand side. So to know where that quarter way is, you visually kind of just pick a halfway point and go halfway between here and here and just make yourself a little mark. And then you can use your brush as a measuring tool and you can see how high you went. Stick your finger there and then just come over to the other side and make a mark at about the same height. Now you know not to go past there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start by applying my paint in a circular fashion. And I don't want it to be one solid color. So every time I go to pick up paint, I'm gonna pick up a different combination. So maybe this time I pick up more brown and white. And I do want it to be almost um, like a pastel kind of color, really nice and soft, almost again, as if this is like the mist or you know some out of focus foliage in the background. Um, I really like the blue in it. Um, it just adds a nice coolness and, you know, puts some distance in that, um, the atmospheric dimension. And I'm just gonna kind of keep going until I get the entire area covered. I, you might see me go back into previous sections. I'm really just making sure that I've got the whole area covered. Um, so you, that's why you'll see me kind of backing into previous sections. But again, you can have this as soft looking as you want or as vibrant as you want. Um, I'm going for, like I said, a more kind of dull, out of focus look to it because I really want this beautiful majestic creature to just kind of come and emerge out of this I don't know what kind of landscape this is maybe like a like a jungly kind of landscape um, but you can imagine yours to be somewhere else but for me I'm definitely thinking 
This is a, a nice jungle. The elephants found a beautiful water hole to go and, you know, maybe take a bath in. So, you know, just have fun with it. You can see I'm going a little bit darker up in these corners. Now I'm picking up more white. So every time I went to go pick up paint, I just kind of picked up a different color combination, but my dominant color is definitely white. Um, that way it does keep that softness to it. Um, and I'm just gonna kind of keep going here. And as I'm painting, I'm just, you know, dreaming of this beautiful creature that we're gonna be painting. I really love elephants. <laughs> so I just think that they're majestic and powerful and beautiful and smart and all kinds of other stuff. So I'm excited about this painting. Um, and then when you get done with this, we are gonna use this same brush for the next step. So I'm just kind of going over this whole thing and maybe you can, while you're finishing up here, maybe you can hear the little jungle creatures making all their, their noises. And then once you've got this step all done, we are gonna use this same brush for the next step. So you're gonna wanna wash it and dry it in preparation for the next step. All right, so what we're doing for the next step is we are painting the first layer to the water. I'm gonna be using my big bristle brush and I'm gonna be using green and brown. I'm gonna be using a left to right brush stroke and I'm just gonna alternate those two colors on my brush. I am not concerned if um, I have a perfectly straight line in through here because we're gonna be hiding it later. So you just wanna go left to right get some dark spots and some light spots. This is meant to look almost like, like a creek or something. Um, where I live, I have lots of brooks and creeks and stuff, and they are, there's dirt underneath them. <laughs> so, and they're shallow, so you see the dirt underneath it, and it also has like reflections of the trees that are around. So a green and brown base to this type of waterway definitely works out great and it's going to provide us nice shadows and all kinds of good stuff. So we are going to be switching brushes to our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this water all nice and painted in, you can put the big brush away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing the first layer to the elephant. We're gonna be using our number 10 brush and we're gonna be using black, brown, and white. And what we're gonna do with those three colors is we are making three shades of gray, a brownish gray, kind of like the color of an elephant. So what I'm gonna do is I want to preserve some of my brown for later. So I'm just gonna scoop a little bit of that into another section so I don't use it all. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of black and mix it into my brown so I get a really dark brownish gray color. And once I've got it as dark as I want, don't go all the way black. Black can very easily take over. Once I do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make three shades of it. So I'm gonna start with it being that super dark. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of white into it until I get it to be my darkest shade that I want. So think of it like um, kind of a dark medium gray. You don't want it super, super dark, um, but you definitely want it on the darker side. And then once I have that, now I'm gonna make two lighter shades of it. So what I can do is I'm spinning it nice and um, thoroughly so I have good consistency and I accidentally just said spin it again and that means the cameraman's gonna make me dance at some point so let's pretend I didn't say that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of white into part of that gray so I make a lighter shade of it and then I'm gonna make a third, even lighter shade, but I, I don't wanna get them, con I don't wanna confuse myself with too many grays next to each other. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, next to my white, I've got some dirty gray right there. I'm just gonna take my dirty brush and make a really light shade over here. So that way I've got three shades and they're kind of separated from one another. I have dark, medium, and light. And now what I'm gonna do with my lightest shade of gray, is I'm going to be um, making the outline for my head. 
So I've got my lightest shade of gray, and what I want you to do is kind of find the center spot of your canvas, and then travel down to the center from the top to the bottom. So again, you can just on the side of your canvas kind of eyeball where that center mark is, and then just come over to the center, make yourself a dot, and then you're gonna make yourself a dot halfway between here and the top of your canvas, so about a quarter of the way down your surface. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make an oval that's about two to three inches wide. Um, and if you don't know how far that is, somebody once told me about a knuckle trick, that uh, the distance between your knuckle is almost an inch. So you could kind of go one, two, or you know somewhere around there, and that's gonna give you the exterior of it. And now you're gonna make yourself an oval. So once I have that oval, and it doesn't have to be perfect, there's no perfectly shaped elephant out there. So once I have myself an oval, what I'm gonna do is I've gotta make the eyebrow bones. So where the eyes sit, the eye sockets, make sure you continue to use your light gray. It's gonna be about a third of the way down the head. And I'm just gonna kind of bump this out a little bit. And then I do the same thing over on the other side, just bump it out just a little bit. Now I'm gonna make the bumps where the tusks come out. So that's gonna be at the bottom of the oval. So I'm gonna come down here and this can be a little bit further than the eyebrow bone if you want. And then just bring it back in like that. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. So like this and bring it back in like this. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use, you could wash your brush if you want to. You don't have to, but I just washed my brush. I'm gonna use my darkest shade of gray, we're gonna paint the ears. So I'm gonna use the dark shade of gray. And what I'm gonna do at the top of the head, oops, hold on a second, I need to reshape this head so he doesn't look like he's got a bump on there. Sorry. <laughs> you can reshape things on the fly, it's a magical thing. So I'm gonna go back into my dark gray. And what I'm gonna do is on either side of the top of the head, I'm gonna make myself a little diagonal there and a little diagonal here. And then on either side, of the um, the nostril, well, they're not nostrils, wherever the, um, the tusks come out, <laughs> I'm gonna make myself kind of like a diagonal there and a diagonal there. So what this signifies is the bottom points of the ears, and this is gonna start you up into that like cartilage area that like shoots out. Um, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up about a third of the way between these two, like right about here, and come all the way over to maybe about two inches away from the edge of my canvas, make a dot. These are the outside points of your ears. So come up about a third of the way, go all the way out to about two inches out, make yourself a dot. Now we're gonna connect the dots. <laughs> so know that there are no two elephant ears exactly alike. So what I'm gonna do is I, I've already got, come up like this. I'm gonna kinda come over, it doesn't have to be straight across. You could go up a little bit if you wanted to. I'm gonna kinda just wiggle it around till I hit this mark. And then once I hit that mark, now I'm gonna kind of just wiggle it till I get in that general vicinity. I'm so sorry, he makes me do these things. And then I just paint it in. So you wanna make sure that you keep the exterior bumps of that face visible. And if you bump into it, it's okay. You know, life's gonna go on. We can certainly readjust things as needed. Um, but I'm gonna get that all nice and painted in. I wanna come a little bit further down to this point and then just paint it in. So once I've got this, this particular ear done, I'm gonna paint the next one. And you don't have to have a, a perfect um, coat on your paint because we are going to be doing another layer um, for the ears which is going to have like the highlights and stuff on them so if you don't have a perfect coat don't worry about it. Now I'm going to do this one and again I'm going to kind of I've already come up a little bit now I'm going to make sure I hit this mark and through here and they wiggle they're like um, I don't know wavy and stuff so you can certainly have some fun with this make the bottom part wiggly, you can have a little pointy part in through there. And then again, I'm still just using that dark paint, the darkest gray. And then I'm just gonna kind of make sure that I keep these bumps on the sides of the face. So I just bring that brush down and now I'm just painting it in. So you can use heavy paint or 
thin paint, whatever you want on this first coat to get the color on the ears. And then once I've got these on, then I am going to be using the medium color gray for the next little piece of my elephant that I'm going to do. All right, so I've got, got the ears painted. I'm going to wash and dry that brush. I'm going to use my medium gray and I'm going to paint the legs that are coming in the front. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come a little bit to the left of this point and I'm going to come down to into the ground or into the water, maybe about an inch of the way, but I want it to come in just a little bit. So just a little bit and then come into the ground, the water about an inch, inch and a half. Then, and don't get your grays mixed up. I almost went into my dark one. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come about halfway down the face and about halfway between the face and the water. And that's the other side of the leg. And I just come in a little bit towards it and then bring it down. And then I'm gonna do my next leg. We're gonna have a, a better meeting point in between these, but right now we're just kind of getting them on here. These are the front legs. And then what I'm gonna do, just getting some more gray here. Um, you Same thing, come over here, but this side you don't need to necessarily connect it to the ear. If you do, it's okay. If not, you know, if, if that helps you visually, you can certainly do that, but it doesn't have to be connected. Um, and then I'm gonna come down in through here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna color these in with my, oh, we need the, we need the back. Hold on, we need the butt. So I'm gonna come about halfway between here and here. This is gonna be the back end of your elephant and just bring this like this to here. And then we're gonna paint this whole section in with your medium gray. So I've got medium gray, just kind of painted it in here. And don't worry if it's not perfect. We've got so many decorations and other things that are gonna add to the beautiful part of our elephant. And again, just make sure that you've got a little bit different color so you can um, see the difference between these sections. Make sure you can see the difference between your ears and the legs um, and then the, the chest and the face. And then again, I'm just coloring this in. It doesn't have to be perfectly executed because we've got so many other elements that are gonna be painted on here that are gonna give our elephant a really super cool illusion. Now I just have one more little section to go. I'm gonna wash and dry that brush. It's gonna be with the darkest gray and it's gonna be the back leg and the little shadow of the belly underneath, um, underneath these legs. So really what I can do is make an invisible line from the big belly and just in a similar curve. And I'm just gonna put this little dark section right in through here. You might not end up seeing this section, but I'd rather you have it than to miss it. And then I'm gonna put a back leg on there. So my back leg is gonna be right next to this one and I'm gonna end it higher in the water. So I'm just gonna end it like right about here. And then on the back leg, something like this. And again, I'm using my darkest gray. And then we are going to use this same brush for the next step. So once, oh, we need a trunk. Hold on, hold the phone. Sometimes I just get lost. I'm like, oh, I think that we're done. But no, our elephant needs a trunk. We're gonna wash and dry the brush. We're gonna use the lightest gray for the trunk. So what we're gonna do is the, tr the trunk comes from this middle section of the head, not where the horns come out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be kind of drawing an imaginary line, not imaginary, you can certainly use the paint if you want to. Um, that's a darker shade. I went into the medium color. I need the light color. See, I just caught myself. So I need my lightest gray, there we go. Um, and I want my trunk to come up because I know that there's a, a good luck um, thing that comes with the trunk being up. So I definitely want to have good luck in my painting. So I'm going to put the trunk up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it come straight down here and then it's going to start to curve before this little V. And then I'm gonna have mine come out just about as far as my ear. 
So here we go. I'm going to come like this and I'm going to come straight down. I'm going to start to curve it here and then just kind of bring it up to right about there. And then I'm going to do the other side of the um, trunk. So again, just imagine it's going to come from this part and that's where it starts. And it'll be wider here and then get more narrow. And if you hit the V, that's okay. If you go past it, no big deal. As long as you can get it a little bit more narrow um, at the end. And if you wanna put the little opening part of the trunk where it kind of like looks like it's got a little cuppy thing, that, that's totally fine. And then just make sure that you've got it painted in. And again, we're gonna, once we've got our trunk painted in, we will, um, go on to the next step and it'll be with this same brush so you can wash and dry this brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're doing now is we are painting the branches up in these top left-hand corners. So I really want my majestic creature to look like he's, you know, just walking through the jungle, maybe trying to find some of his jungle friends to take a bath or play with. I wonder what kind of jungle friends he has. Maybe monkeys? I think elephants and warthogs like each other. I don't know why I think that, but I think so. I know that they like, they hang out with white birds too. I don't know. He's gonna go find some friends. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna be using brown, black, and white. I'm not gonna mix a pre-mix a gray. I'm just gonna put them all on my brush at the same time. I want these to kind of just look like he, like they're just coming off of the side, like he's walking through some trees. He, I don't know if it's a he or she, but my elephant <laughs> is just walking through some trees. So I use a good amount of paint on my brush, but I don't push hard. So that way it's gonna end up looking like these little branches. And we're gonna be putting a ton of leaves and stuff on this. So this is really just kind of the base coat to give us somewhere to put our leaves later. So again, I'm kind of coming over the side. Maybe you've got a couple coming in through here. I do wanna leave that center area clear. So again, it's almost like he's got a nice entry, he, she. I don't know what it is. I don't know why I keep calling it a he. Um, but um, you have fun with it. Branches can cross over one another. They don't all have to occupy their own space. And you can put as many as you want. Just have fun with it. And then we are going to be, let's see, we're going to use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got enough branches occupying these top corners, you can wash and dry that medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are adding the highlights and shadows to the body and face of our elephant. Really, the dimensional elements of it. Um, we don't need to go super crazy and really in detail because we've got so many decorations and stuff that we're putting on the elephant later. But I do want to give the illusion of those ears being round and floppy. And I want to, you know, maybe put a couple of wrinkles on that nose. Um, I definitely want to put a little highlight on the, the skin where the tusks come out. Um, and if I need to, I can darken up any little shadowy areas. So how I'm going to start this, I'm going to be using all three of those grays. And if you want to or need to, you could also use white by itself or black by itself. It's all how much in detail that you want. But what I'm really going for is a dark area in right next to the face, lighter where it kind of bubbles out on those ears, light right here, dark in through here, and maybe a couple little wrinkles on these legs. I'm gonna have a blanket on the back so I don't really care about the um, side of the elephant. So here I go, I'm gonna start with my dark gray, and I'm just gonna make sure that I have um, this fully painted in right next to the face, because I can see that mine is a little bit streaky, so I wanna make sure that I've got a nice second coat on here where it's nice and fully painted. And then once I make sure that it's fully painted with my dark color, then what I'm gonna do is start picking up the lighter shades of gray and start doing this. So they're coming out from near the head and they kind of loop over like almost like, I don't know, like a flower kind of or an umbrella 
Um, you can use your lightest gray too. That's going to give you the, the biggest effect when it comes to it. Um, but again, you don't really have to go too um, overboard with the, with the highlights. You just want to make sure that you have enough there that reads as a, you know, a big floppy ear. And then once I've got that one done, then I can go on to the next one, making sure first I'm going to make sure that I have enough paint on there and make sure my edges are nice and painted in so I don't have any unpainted spots. And then what I can do is I start using the, um, the medium and then the light, just kind of progressively getting to a lighter shade of gray on the tops of those ears. And if you can get the tops the lightest, that's going to provide the best illusion um, for the viewer. And again, think of it all coming out of these two little areas in through here and just kind of spilling out over the sides, almost like a little waterfall perhaps. And then if you want to use a little white at the top just to make it the brightest, that would work. And I'm going to do the same thing for the trunk. So I've used the lightest gray there. So you could actually use a combination of all of your grays just to get the um, the illusion of the, the wrinkles. So I'm going to just kind of go like this in through here. I'm going to curve it so that way it looks like it's got a curve to the face. And then when I start going in through here, you can either you know, still do it in that same curve or switch directions of the curve, whatever works for you. Just adding that little bit of a curve helps to give the illusion. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of white and they don't have to be perfect. We're just trying to tell the story that this, this beast, this beautiful beast has some nice wrinkles on there. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of my lightest gray or white to get these um, areas where the tusks are gonna come out to be nice and light, and they don't have to be the same exact size. We might be looking at the elephant at a slightly different angle. And then if I need to or want to, I can add a little shadow underneath these ears. I added a little bit of black and my dark brown, or my dark uh, gray, just to give you know the I, information that it's shadowed underneath there. And you might not need much. You might already have it um, enough where you can tell, um, but it sitting next to those dark ears, it might give it a little bit um, more depth if you can add a touch more darkness in through there. And then I'm just gonna kinda add a little bit of the lighter gray onto these legs to give them a sense of uh, shape to them and a sense of wrinkliness. And then once I've got this step all nice and done, I am, let's see, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna switch brushes to my large brush after this step. Again, don't worry about the back end because you're gonna have a blanket on top of that. Uh, let's see, that's it. Looks good to me. We're gonna switch brushes to the large brush. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing our low-lying bushes. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm using my large brush and the colors that I am using are black, brown, green, yellow, and white. And I said them in that order because that's the order I'm going to use them in. I want it to be really dark on the base where it hits the water and then it's going to get lighter and lighter as if that sunlight is coming from the back and it's just kind of kissing the edges of these little bushes. So here we go. I'm gonna start with black and brown. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of give myself a little area down here. And I know I've got the elephant to contend with. I've made myself a very healthy elephant that seems to find all of the trees to eat and all of the things it needs to eat. It's very healthy. So it's occupying a lot of my canvas. But um, so I'm not gonna have a ton of room for these, but. I like to make it nice and dark at the bottom. And then what's gonna happen, I'm still just using black and brown. I don't want it to look too consistent. So I'm definitely kind of making sure my edges are kind of rough. 
And then once I've got that black and brown and I've got it into a good shape, I think I want this one to come up just a little bit more. You can see I'm not using a lot of paint because I don't want it to get muddled when I start to use the green, which is what I'm gonna start to use right now. I just picked up green, I did not wash my brush, and now I'm just kind of tapping the green along some of the edges. I'm not bringing it all the way back to the bottom. Um, but I am getting it along those edges. Just very gently, just tap, tap, tapping the tip of my brush. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. So again, what we're trying to do is get it to be lighter and lighter on the edges. So you can come back into the bush a little bit with the green, but don't go all the way and make it super bright on the interior. And then what I'm gonna do is, without washing my brush, I'm gonna make myself a light yellowy green. So I've got that, um, my dirty brush and I'm just kind of pre-mixing the yellow and the green on my palette. So this is gonna be a really vibrant, beautiful, outdoorsy, sun-kissed, sun um, yellowy green. I added a touch of white also. And now I'm just really using the end of my brush, the little tiny tip, tip, tip of my brush to get these beautiful highlights on the edges. And you can go past the bush too. That's gonna help to make it look a little bit more realistic. And then I'll do that on both sides. And after I do that, I'm gonna touch my brush into a little bit of white to get that final little extra special tiny little pop of brightness on the tips of the the branches, and again, these are just meant to look like little bushes, so you don't have to make them really um, all exactly the same. You can have some areas that have more of the yellow and green. Maybe you've got little pops through in the center. Maybe there's a little bush that's in the front that's getting a little bit more of that sunshine. So you have fun with the amount that you want, but definitely try and keep it inconsistent. And now I'm touching my brush a little bit in white and I didn't wash my brush. So this is really gonna add those extra pops of beautiful brightness on the edges of those leaves. And again, it's meant to look like it's being, the, the sunlight is hitting it from the other side. So that's really why we're just kind of hitting those little tiny tips. And then we are going to be switching brushes to the medium brush. So once you've got this all nice and beautiful and kissed with the sunshine, you can put the big brush away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're putting the leaves on our trees up above. I'm gonna be using my medium brush and the colors that I'm gonna be using are brown, green, yellow, and white. So similar to how I had this dark at the edges and lighter on the, and the tips, I'm gonna do the same thing up top, but I don't want it to be as dark as down here, which is why I'm not using black. So I'm gonna start with brown and I'm gonna just I wanna just give the um, impression of leaves. I don't necessarily need to make sure I have every single one represented on here. So I'm just gonna do a fun flick with my brush to kind of give the, um, you know, the idea, the representation of some, some leaves in through here. So again, I'm just kind of using my brush and kind of flicking it. I'm not washing it. I'm gonna go into green next and I'm gonna overlap some of the brown and the green and then I'll have that green going a little bit further into um, the trees itself. And you can have, once you start getting into these lighter colors, you can have more like little clusters of the leaves. You don't have to have it all systematically placed over the whole tree or all over the whole branches. And then once you've got some a good amount of the green ones, now I'm gonna make myself more of that really vibrant yellowy green. So I'm mixing green, yellow, and white and on my palette. And this is gonna be a really vibrant, summer, beautiful, green that's gonna really accent and provide some nice highlights to this. And again, you can have it as vibrant as you want. I really want this to look like it's kind of encapsulated and he's walking through, you know, going to meet all of his, his jungle friends. <laughs> I don't know why, but I'd like to hang out with this elephant. So maybe, maybe you know, it'll find its way to, to my New England home. <laughs> 
kind of have 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 a cup of tea with me someday. And then once I've got that, now I'm just going to pick up a little bit of white, maybe white and yellow, make these edges really, really nice and beautifully vibrant. And again, I'm just going for those edges to get them the brightest. You can put a little bit on the inside, but definitely, oops, I just had a little bit of blue. Hmm. A little blue on my brush there. Um, just get those little tiny tips, even maybe just dot it a little bit as opposed to doing a long flick. And then once you've got this all done, we're gonna switch brushes to our small brush. So get after you get all these beautiful leaves on this tree, you can put this medium brush away in your water cup, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are finishing our facial features. Try and say that three times fast. Finish facial feature, finish, I can't do it. <laughs> finish facial feature, fin I can't do it fast. Fi finish facial features, finish facial feature, finish, fi ah. Finish facial feature, finish facial features, finish facial features, yeah. <laughs> yeah! So this is gonna consist of the eyes, and the tusks. And what else? That's it. That's it. Just the eyes and the tusks. So the colors that I'm going to use are brown, white, and black. And I'm going to start with just a little black line for or black spot for the eyes. So the eyes are going to be right below these eyebrow bones that you've just made. So if you kind of just go diagonally from that and just make yourself a little section for the eye, that's where it's gonna be. It's gonna be like seemingly on the face, um, but near that eyebrow bone that you've done. And it's not really a big spot, you know, just a little, they've got little, little eyes. Then I'm gonna not wash my brush and I'm just picking up a little bit of white and I'm gonna kind of make like circle little wrinkles around the eye. And again, I'm not really doing much. I'm not rendering it into a full blown, you know, photo realistic type elephant. I just want to give the, a little bit of accuracy around, you know, the face. So I've got some little wrinkles on there. I think I'm going to pull this up a little bit too. So it looks more like that. So I've got a little bit of white on my brush. going to just pull this up a little bit. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the tusks with um, brown and white. So I have white on my brush. I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of brown. Um, and these are gonna come out right from here, but to make it look a little bit more realistic, if you don't bring it all the way to the edge, if you just bring it in just a little bit, that'll make it look a little bit more realistic. Like this is, I don't know if it's like the skin that kind of in encases the tusk. I don't know. I don't know what the anatomy is. And then I'm gonna bring it, so I've got it kind of a little, you know, almost to the trunk and almost to the edge of that little skin part. And then I'm gonna bring it down and out. And wherever it lands, it lands. Don't worry about if it covers a point or not, just whatever you're feeling at that time is gonna work. You want, you want it to be wider where it's going into the face and thinner or skinnier when it hits the end of it. So you might need to adjust your paint. Maybe you need more white, more brown, whatever works. And if you can get it a little bit lighter on the end of the tusk, almost more white on the end of the tusk, that'll give it a little bit more dimension. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the second one. And if you don't feel like you can, you know, like you have enough dimension, you could always pick up a tiny bit of black paint and just put a little shadow underneath the skin part at the top. And that's gonna make it look even more realistic. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and do the other one. Hold on, I'm adjusting my little skin part here or put a little highlight up there, whatever you need to do. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do the other one. Again, I've just got brown and white on my brush. I'm gonna make sure that I've got it in the place that I want right here. And then I'm gonna bring it out, you know, wherever it lands, it lands. Oh, maybe this one's gonna go out into the air a little bit. They can be different lengths. They don't have to be exactly the same length. Um, and you can make them as, you know, long as you want. 
they are definitely an identifiable aspect of the elephant as too is the noise that the elephants make. They make such a great trumpeting noise. I do know though that that trumpeting noise that they make is a sign of anger, which is not, you know, the best noise to hear if, if the elephant is coming towards you. But, you know, it's their, it's their sign, you know. They do have a, a more gentler way of communicating with each other. I guess they make like this low vibration noise that humans can't even hear. So they're so intelligent that they have their own language that they use to communicate with one another, which is super cool. I'm just gonna add a little bit more of a shadow underneath this little part here so we can see it a little bit better. Maybe just a tiny little highlight up here. And then let's see, what are we gonna do for the next step? We're gonna use this same brush for the next step, but you're gonna to wanna to wash it and dry it. So once you get these beautiful tusks on here, you can take this small brush, wash it and dry it, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're doing for the next step is we are, we're decorating our elephant. So I think it's really cool because I'm a painter, painting a painted elephant. <laughs> so what this is, is, um, so in India, they have their elephants that they celebrate. It's just, they're, it's, it's in their culture. These are beautiful, majestic animals that they celebrate and they paint them and they decorate them. They can decorate them with headdresses and jewels and blankets and, you know, they, paint them with all different kinds of elaborate designs and and it, they're just beautiful. I think they're beautiful, you know, it's a beautiful way to celebrate such an amazing creature. So, creature, it is a creature, it's an animal. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna just give my rendition. I'm gonna have a blanket on it. I'm gonna have some beautiful designs all around the face and on the ears and on the legs. I want you to feel free to decorate your elephant whatever way you want. I'm going to be, the, all of the designs that I'm putting on my elephant are just from my imagination. I'm having fun with it, so I want you to do the same as well. So I'm going to be using my small brush and I'm going to be using every color on my palette except for brown, except for brown. And I'll use black, but I'm gonna use that later and I'll show you, we're gonna do shadows and highlights. So, but for the bright colors, I will be using all the colors on my palette. So you can go straight off your palette and use whatever is on there. Um, but if you want these colors to really pop and be visible on top of that gray, you wanna make sure you have some white in the color. So if I want a light yellow or bright yellow, I wanna use yellow with white because the white is gonna provide it with, um, with a substance that's gonna make it so it's not so see-through. You could even pre-mix yourself some fun colors. So if I want like a peachy kind of color, I could use my orange and yellow and white and make myself this vibrant, peachy kind of color. If I wanted pink, I could mix my red and my white and I'm gonna have this beautiful, like subtle pink kind of color. So really have fun with whatever colors that you want. So how I'm gonna start this is I'm gonna start with um, my blanket because I know that that's gonna occupy a lot of space. So I think I'm gonna go for like a reddish kind of blanket. So I've got red with a little bit of white because I don't want it to be too see-through. So I've got my red with a little bit of white. I do want there to be a little bit of the uh, backside of the elephant showing and to make it look a little bit three-dimensional, I'm gonna have it coming out in through here and covering this area. And I'm gonna put it with a little bit of a curve so it looks like it's going around the elephant. So here we go, I'm starting right here and I'm gonna go down into this vicinity and then I'm gonna do the same thing over here, going down maybe in through here and then I'm gonna give it a little rippled edge like that and then I'm just gonna paint it in. I might paint a design on it in a little bit but right now I'm just gonna get that base coat on there and then I'm gonna go start making myself designs everywhere else. So one of my um, tips for you is as you're doing this, if you like a certain color, like I'm totally digging this color, 
I'm not going to wash my brush. I'm just going to go and use that color elsewhere. Like I want to put maybe a stripe on the ear. So maybe I'm going to follow the, the bottom wiggle of the ear and make myself, oh, the ear gets hidden at the, on the other side of the tusk. So I'll just stop right there. And I like my designs. I, I kind of like my designs a little symmetrical. That's the my A-type personality that comes out every now and again. Um, so I'm going to do the same thing on this ear. And oh my god, I love this color. <laughs> so I'm going to use this color. Hmm, maybe I'm going to put um, a design on this leg over here. So maybe I'm going to... I don't want to overdo this color, but I definitely, I'm so excited about this color. So I'm going to bring maybe some cool design over here. Maybe I'm going to put some of this on the trunk and some, maybe some polka dots. I'm going to do a different color on my trunk too, but this is definitely going to get the party started here. Uh, where else do I want this color? Oh my God, I love this color. <laughs> maybe I'll, ooh, maybe I'll put a couple of little dots up here so again just have fun have fun i'm gonna wash and dry my brush i'm gonna make myself um use another color so my elephant is isn't totally designed in that same color i think actually i'm gonna use some of this yellowy green from the trees because i think that'll complement it well so i've got yellow green and white and i'm going to use this as almost like a tribal kind of design on the on the bridge of the trunk so maybe i'm gonna do a little curve in through here and again the more white you use in it the more it's going to be less see-through um so maybe i'll do something like that and maybe i don't know something like that mm, we'll go another one over here then maybe hmm, let's see maybe one cool one down here oh i like making my designs i'm gonna make a design over here and here you can see how i'm just kind of making it symmetrical and again you have your own fun with it you might want yours more um i don't know flowery or stripes or maybe you have like a plaid pattern you can certainly, maybe yours is all filled with polka dots. Maybe you make your ears look like butterflies. I don't know. Just have fun with this. I'm going to make a couple of little, maybe like almost like teardrop kind of designs on this leg. And again, you can, um, it doesn't have to be the same from one leg to the next. It doesn't have to be the same from one side to the other. You just, you know, Go with whatever's coming out of you naturally. I think I'm gonna put maybe a little orange. Ooh, I wanna maybe go into that little peach color. Ooh, yeah. Sorry, I get a little excited about colors every now and again, especially when they're all working together. Oh, I'm gonna use some of that, some of that um, orangey color, put some more cool polka dots. And so I was saying stuff about um, paint, they paint their elephants and they also, decorate them with the headdresses and with the jewels and stuff. So what I'm going to do after I've got all of my decorations on here is I'm going to show you how you can give the illusion of making these look like they're not just painted on there, but they're actually um, three-dimensional decorations. So that's a really cool aspect that um, I'm going to show you in the next step. I just put orange and white. And again, you can see I'm just having fun. You could even just use white if you wanted to. Um, I think I'm going to, let's see, incorporate maybe a little bit of blue and white. So I'm just putting, again, I want it to show. So I'm going to use blue and white at the same time. So I'm just pre-mixing myself a little bit of that color. And then maybe I'm going to do another stripe on these ears yeah i like this maybe a little bit lighter and you can make it again different from one side to the other have fun with this you know they these are just they're just beautiful uh let's see i want some i want some maybe some little flowery things in through here and again you could make this as elaborate as you want or as simple as you want. You could almost just put your own personality into this decorative design. If you, you know, have a favorite 
piece of clothing that has a really cool pattern on it that you would like to emulate you know just have fun with it I think I'm gonna put like maybe a, a cool band right here something like that maybe I'll do some some diagonal stripes you again you could do polka dots you could do oh I think I'm gonna put some polka dots down here I like polka dots they're just fun you could do squiggly marks you could do X's you could do I don't know I don't know what other kind of shapes there are oh I want something on the head here so I'm gonna use some I think I'm gonna use some orange and white on my brush at the same time then maybe I'll do this will be my little headdress part like this I'll do a big we'll make this into like a jewel in a little while so I'm gonna put a nice thick orange spot maybe a little one there I don't know if I think it's just painted. I don't think that they like tattoo the elephants. I think it's all just removable paint that they have for a temporary basis so it doesn't harm the the animals. It's just something that they use like a festival. When you go to a festival there's body painting in the um I know that there's what we uh, there's a show that's called Skin Wars where it's a, a contest to see what kind of elaborate painting that you can paint on the human body. So this, I guess, is the the elephant equivalent to it. Um, let's see what else. Oh, I think I want some marks on my um, my blanket over here. I'm going to use just straight blue. I think I'm going to make it almost like plaid, and then I think I'm going to maybe put some um, little tassels on the bottom of it to make it a little bit more three-dimensional here so a little little red and white tassels on here and again you could stripe this with you know white if you wanted to let's see hmm gosh he's looking pretty cool i think i want to look a little bit more white on here and then i'm going to use the same brush for the next step. We have a couple of little tiny things left to do on the elephant itself. So let's, we're gonna do that for the next step. So when you're all set with your decorations, you can wash and dry the small brush and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are adding the life into the eyes. So I'm gonna be using my tiny brush and I'm gonna be using white and black. It's mostly gonna be white, but if you run into a little bit of trouble and you want to blend it a little bit, you can use a touch of black. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a tiny bit of white paint and I don't want to do this in the entire eye. It's going to be towards the lower part of the eye and I'm going to do a little bit of like a curved line. And if it ends up too white, all you need to do is pick up a teeny tiny bit of black paint and just kind of blend in that top part of it. So this is just kind of adding the sparkle into the eye. You could also, if you wanted to, you could add little eyelashes. So I'll show you how to do that too. So if you want it to look more feminine, you could certainly, hold on a second, just, I brought that line a little bit too far down. So I'm just adding a touch of black underneath it. So you could take a little bit of black paint and add some little tiny cute eyelashes if you wanted to, so totally up to you. That'll make it look a little bit more feminine. And then we are gonna use the same brush for the next step, so you're just gonna wanna wash it and dry it. Whoops. <laughs> All right, so what we're doing now is we're adding the highlights and shadows to our decorations. So I'm gonna use my small brush, and I recommend only adding these to the pieces that you want to look three-dimensional. So if you want it to look like it's painted, don't add the highlights and shadows. If you want it to look three-dimensional, like I want this part to look like it's a three-dimensional like headdress, I'm gonna add highlights and shadows. So I'm gonna do my shadows first, which is just black paint. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a line on what I want to be the shadowed side. I wouldn't do it on the other side, just on one side. For my decorations up here, I'm gonna add a little bit of black underneath. And this is gonna just give it a three-dimensional appearance. So if you run into wet paint and it's you need it to dry, you can totally use just a blow dryer or just wait a minute, acrylic paint dries really nice and fast. So you can see how these just pop right out of the head once you've 
got that little tiny black outline underneath them. And you can do this to any of them if you want, you know, there to look like there's more jewels all over the head or more decorative elements on the ears. You can certainly have fun with it. And then to add a highlight, I'm washing and drying my brush and I'm just using white. So if I want this to really pop out and read as three dimensional, I'll just put a little white dot somewhere on it. And that's gonna make it just pop right out and make it look so three dimensional. And then we are going to be using the medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your highlights and your shadows on your decorations, you can put your small brush away in your water cup, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're doing for the next step is we are painting our reflection. I'm gonna be using my medium brush and let's see here, I'm gonna be using, hmm, all the colors on my palette. <laughs> So how I'm going to do this is I, it's reflecting everything that's up above. So you, you naturally should be using all the same colors that you've got up here. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to first start with a dark reflection of the elephant that is almost going to come in a V type fashion. So I'm going to use my darkest gray plus a tiny bit of black on my brush and I'm going to loosely go left to right. I'm going to start it right at the bottom of the legs and then I am going to be going out in a making it like a long V type fashion so it gets wider and wider. I don't want to cover up all of my water um, the original color so that's why I am not using a big brush. I'm not using a lot of paint. I just really want this to be the you know, a dark watered reflection of what's above it. So I do want it to be on the darker side so it has a little bit more drama and it speaks of, a, you know, of the dark brook water or whatever kind of water it is um, in. And then once I've got that on there, again, I'm not kind of traveling too, too far. I'm, I'm really kind of going from dark to light um, with the color order. I did that. Now I'm gonna tackle this area in through here. So because it goes from dark to light up here, I've got that dark paint already on my brush. So I'm gonna go black with a little bit of green and I'm just gonna go, oh, I need a little bit more black here. Just go a little bit black in through here. And then I'm not gonna go far cause I know I wanna carry some of these elephant colors down in through here. So I know I don't, um, want these reflections to be really long. I just want them to kind of tell the story of what's above it. So I've got a little bit of the dark in through there. Now I'm going into that brighter yellow green, which is gonna tell the story of what's on the edges there. And then I'm just carrying that along the edge. And if you find that you're um, getting a little bit of muddied water, like you have too much paint on your brush, feel free to wash it and dry it at any time. Don't feel like you have to be the hero and not wash your brush the whole time because I'm gonna wash my brush right now. Because I know what I wanna do next is I'm gonna pull some of this sky color into this lighter area. So it tells the story of this sky down here. So I used blue, green, brown, and white for that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick a little bit of white, a little bit of blue, a little bit of green, and a little bit of brown, and use that color combination. And if you bump into your uh, elephant's legs here, don't worry about it. You can certainly clean that up. We're gonna have a big splash over it in a minute too that's gonna clear that up. I think I want a little bit more blue on my brush. And I'm just gonna bring a little bit of this into the reflection. Again, it doesn't have to be 100%, but you want it to read as that's the reflection from the sky behind the elephant. Um, so again, and you want there to be a little bit of the water showing too. So I don't wanna color it 100%. So I've got that. I wanna put a little bit over on this right hand side and just a teeny tiny bit in through here. And then I want maybe a little bit peeking through the side of the elephant in through here. Maybe just wisping my brush a little bit left to right in through there. 
and then maybe the same thing over on this side kind of filling in this gap a little bit but not you know not a hundred percent just something that reads as that's what it is and now I need to kind of pull some of these colors down from the elephant's decorations. So you just kind of pick, I've got some of my reddish color. I go directly below here and I'm gonna put just a little spattering of that color in through there. I've got a little bit of this here. So maybe just pull a little bit of that there, maybe a little bit on my trunk. So I go directly below my trunk and put a little bit in through here. I've got a little bit here, but it's the reflection. It can be all wiggly and, you know, non, just a little interpretive and out of focus. I've got some blue here, so maybe I just put a little bit of blue there, a little bit of blue in through here. So you can see I'm just kind of using a touch of these colors in through that reflection just to tell the story that that is, in fact, what it is. I definitely want to pull some of this bright, orange down here in through this trunk so you know that this is the trunk coming in through here uh, let's see what else we've got some of this bright green down the center above the trunk a little bit so maybe i just put a little bit of that down by the bottom of my canvas i got a little bit lighter color in through here so maybe i use a little bit of my lightest gray down here just to tell the story of the ears maybe i do the same thing over on this side and let's see what else oh maybe a little bit of white from the trunk from the tusks so this will be somewhere in this vicinity and again you don't need it to be perfect just go below that color and incorporate a touch of it into that water that's going to read as what it is Boy, I think that's pretty good. Hold on, I'm gonna put a little bit of the orange, maybe just a touch down at the itty bitty bottom of my canvas, and maybe a little bit more blue in the ears, just to, again, give that a little bit uh, telling the story of the ears. Hmm, I think that's it. I like it. All right, so we're gonna go on to the next step with our big brush so you can get ready for that step. All right, so we are on to making our splash. So I'm gonna be using the big brush. Um, I'm gonna be using mostly white, but I'll also use colors, the dominant colors from the water, which are gonna be brown, green, and, uh, that's, and blue, brown, green, and blue. So here we go. I'm gonna start with a little bit of white. The trick to this is don't use a lot of paint and you don't wanna over blend. So, I want there to be like a little roughness at the bottom, so I'm gonna take my brush and just kind of go left to right just to kind of get the water all ripply at the bottom of the um, legs. And then once I've got that, then I can start kind of dotting it up in a not um, solid fashion. I'm just using the tip of my brush and I'm gonna do it a little bit on the inside. Maybe you do one leg more than the other in kind of giving the impression that one leg just splashed down a little bit more than the other one did, um, but that's totally up to you. But my elephant, he's, he's ready to go take a bath. He's just playing in the water. Um, so now I'm picking up a little bit of blue, green, and maybe a touch of brown. This is gonna give it a three-dimensional kind of element to it. If you just use white, it's, I might have used, picked up a little bit of black, but that's okay. If you just use white, it won't look as realistic. So you need to have those little shadows and stuff within the splashes um, but the key really is to not use a lot of paint um, and I'm just going to touch just a little bit more white onto my brush and get a little bit more pops right on top and then once you feel like you've got enough of this splash maybe I'll put a little bit more splash over here once you've got enough of this splash and you're feeling comfortable with it oh, maybe a little bit up between the legs um, we have one tiny little step to go and it's going to be with your small brush. Mm, I think, I think that's pretty good. Got a little bit of ripple out through here. So you can get ready with your small brush for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step, which is the final step of any painting, which is to sign it. So I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm gonna sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna use black paint. 
And I think I'm going to do it in the bottom left. I do my initials. You could certainly do your first name or the date or a symbol. Whatever you want is totally fine by me. It's however you want your painting to be identified. And that is going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoy the process. I hope you love your beautifully decorated, majestic elephant. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.